हेलो गाइस अमेजॉन ऑफर्स अ सीटीसी ऑफ 51 लाख फॉर देयर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर वन रोल व्हिच इज एसडी 1 एंड अ स्टाइपेंड ऑफ 1 लाख पर मंथ फॉर देयर एसडी इंटर्न रोल आई वांट यू टू गेट सिलेक्टेड देयर बट द फर्स्ट राउंड इज द ओए राउंड वेयर मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स फेस डिफिकल्टी इन 2025 मेनी स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ माइन हैव क्रैक्ड वेरी हाई पेइंग सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर ऑफर्स फ्रॉम अमेजॉन फ्रॉम द रेंज 25 एलपी टू 51 एलपी व्हिच यू कैन सी हियर हियर एंड हियर In 2025 many candidates are giving Amazon online assessment and they are miserably failing because Amazon is asking hard unseen DSA coding problems again and again in the different problem sets The most common mistake that most of the students and candidates are making is that they just do hundreds of standard DSA problems from the standard DSA sheets and hundreds of standard easy DSA problems from lead code and GFG and then they get satisfied they think that their ds preparation was over no guys it's not over it's not enough the high paying companies are asking very hard and thin ds questions in their online assessments and interviews many times they are not even solvable by ai like chat gpt and deep seek so you have to consistently train and practice hard and thin ds problems on a regular basis and that really helps you increase your logical problem solving skills through the roof ram ram Hello guys, I'm Kumar K. Previously, I worked at Amazon and Mia.net as a software engineer. So guys, all the previously asked questions in Amazon online assessment, the best roadmap and the best strategy to prepare for Amazon OA, the video and all the resources help for that is in the comments and in the description of this video. So make sure you check it out. Now in this video, in just seven to eight minutes, we are going to solve a super hard DSA problem asked in Amazon online assessment recently. So watch it with full focus and increase your skills. Ram Ram. So guys, Ram Ram, to get fifty one lakh rupees in our bank account, we need to solve this DSA question asked by Amazon in their online assessment for SD one and SD internship roles. We are given two arrays, array A and array B. We want that for each index from zero to four. A of i should not be equal to B of i. In this case, you can see that index zero is satisfying the condition. A i is not equal. A of zero is not equal to B of zero. Index one is also satisfying the condition. A of one is not equal to B of one. Index two is also satisfying the condition. A of two is not equal to B of two. Index three is is not satisfying the condition. Index zero one two is satisfying the condition, but index three is not satisfying the condition. Why? Because a of three is equal to b of three, and index four is also not satisfying the condition. Because a of four is equal to b of four, we want that for each index i, a i should not be equal to b of i. So, what kind of swaps we can do on array a so that we can achieve the final condition where a of i is not equal to b of i? Before we go towards the solution, let's check the constraints. Size of the array will be from one to ten to five. Size of array A will be equivalent to size of array B. Very good. Elements in both the arrays will range from one to ten raised to nine. Okay. Guys, Ram Ram. The solution is that you will swap index three with index four. Index three you need to swap with index four. Earlier two was here, four was here. So on array A you will do the swap operation. You have to do minimum number of swap operations on array A so that in the end, in the finale, for each index i, a of i is not equal to b of i. We can see that index three and index four had problems. At index three, this two two were matching, and at index four, this four four were matching. So swap two four will now look like four two, and the problem has been solved. See, four is not matching the vertical two, two is not matching this vertical four, one is not matching this vertical eight, three is not matching this vertical two, and same goes for the first index. So in one minimum operation, by doing swap three at index three and four, tactically we have reached the solution. So now let's go towards the first part of the actual solution. So guys, Ram Ram, the intuitional thoughts and the intuition leads us to the Concept of vertical bonds which we can create. Let's call red color as a good bond and green color as a bad bond. So, which are the good bonds? There is only single good bond here. This is four to three. This is a good vertical bond. Whenever a i is not equal to b of i, we call it as a good vertical bond. Rest all are the bad bonds. See, one one equal one one equal. These are bad vertical bonds. These are bad vertical bonds. These are bad vertical bonds. If I go towards the Google document. If a i not equal to b i, we call it as good bond. If a i equal to equal to b of i, we call it as bad bond. We want zero bad bonds, guys. Currently, there are four bad bonds in front of you. We want the count of bad bonds to be zero. If the count of bad bonds is zero, 
it means the problem has been solved all the bonds are good so we need to destroy the bad bonds in the minimum number of operations in one operation we can swap any two numbers in array a so how can we do the swap so that bad bonds can uh, be destroyed and the nice trick is bad bonds can destroy each other or bad bonds can be resolved by each other how you can see that the, these are the one 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 to one bad bonds these are two to two bad bonds you can swap them this one to one bad bond you can swap with this two to two bond and this one to one bad bond you can swap with this two to two bad bond if you swap them like this what is the final output final output is very interesting in that case the numbers which come here the numbers which come here if you do the swap like this it will be 2211 it will be what 2211 for array a and for array b for array b it will remain the same you cannot make any changes in array b so can you see guys now whatever vertical bonds you have whatever like let's denote this as bonds okay for now all the vertical bonds have now become good because for each a of i b of i is not matching so guys the main basic concept is that the good bonds can resolve each other let's say you have one to one vertical five five one to one vertical bonds you have five one to one vertical bonds you have three vertical two to two bonds how will they be resolved one to one let me show you one to one this is this thing is coming for five times just giving you an example this thing is coming for five times like this okay and then two to two bonds let's say there are uh, they are coming like this three times okay so what you will do all these bad bonds you will start making them fight each other this one to one bond will fight with this two to two bond so this much part has been solved this one to one bond will be you know getting swapped with that two to two bond so this has been solved and this two to two bond will be solved with this one to one bond in the end only two one to one bonds will remain which are unsolved these are unsolved how to solve them we will look at it later so guys if there are five one to one bonds and three two to two bonds the answer is five minus three in the end only two bonds will remain which are one to one in nature that's it guys that's it now let's go towards the second part of the actual solution now guys the actual solution is that you will extract all the bad bonds from array a and array b you will make them fight each other optimally you will simulate this process using hash map plus priority queue Let's see. This is array one one three two three five. This is array B one one four two three eight. If I try to extract the bad bonds, one two one bad bond, one two one bad bond, two 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 bad bond, three two three bad bond. Here it is. Now let's make the bad bonds fight each other. This one two one bond can fight with this. So you can make a single swap here, and two vertical bonds will get destroyed. This one two one bond can swap with this three two three bond, and one more vertical swap destroys what two vertical bonds. So in two swaps, two minimum operations, you are able to destroy all the vertical four vertical bonds, VBs. Okay. How can we simulate the process using priority queue and hash map? Priority queue. We can see we are storing the quantity of bad bonds along with the type of bad bonds. So you can see that one to one bond is coming for two times, two to two bond is coming for one time, and three to three bond is coming for one time. So always greedily optimal algorithm is to make the two largest quantities fight each other. Two and one will fight with each other. Okay, the one to one bond coming two times and two to two bond coming one time will fight each other. So what will happen? This will get destroyed and like. This one will attack this. So two minus one, only one bond of one to one type will remain, and two to two bond is destroyed. So you can see one bond of one to one type, and this priority queue always maintains the things in the descending order of quantity because you always want the top two elements, right? That's why. So once this procedure is done, we come here. We can see here a one to one bond, a one to one bond coming one time, and a three to three bond coming one time. They both of them fight each other zero, empty. Problem has been solved. At the places needed, you can use hash map as well. You can study from prerequisite course if needed. These things, Ram Ram. Now, HKS is that in the end of the fight, some type of bond might still have same frequency. It can happen that in the end, the priority queue still has one bond with some frequency, and there is no other bad bond to fight it. There is no other bad bond, bad bond of some other type to fight it. In that case, check if it can be swapped with some other good bond. If it can be done, answer is possible, or else the answer is minus one, not possible. Okay. Let's take a sample bad bond Y to Y. Let's take a sample good bond V to U. Both are not equal, so good bond. And guys, V comma U should also not be equal to Y if you want to make them swap. Okay, Y you can think about it. So if you find a good bond V to U such that V and U is not equal to Y, you can solve this. You can solve the bad bond which is remaining because there is no other bad bond remaining. Only bad bond of type Y is remaining. You can swap it. What will happen? We will go here. Y will go V to Y. Y to U. See, it's looking good. So solution is greedily optimal. See, in many videos, first of all, no one is explaining such hard level Amazon way problems in such best way to you people. But the more important thing is explaining you why is this correct. This is greedily optimal locally plus globally because Two vertical bonds get destroyed by one swap initially. So, in minimum number of swap, you are destroying the maximum number of vertical bad bonds. This was when does this happen? This happens when you are doing the priority queue simulation. 
each time whenever you do a single swap two two vertical bonds get destroyed and that is the maximum number of vertical bonds that can be destroyed in one swap so you are doing minimum number of swaps only when the fight ends and if some vertical bond still remains in the if the fight ends the priority queue might have might look like this that 10 bonds of one to one type are still remaining only one element can remain in priority queue. why because you're always taking the top two elements and destroying one of them right sequentially so one element might remain in that case let's say it says that one to one bond is coming for 10 times full array has been solved and one to one bond is coming 10 times what will you do you will search for other good bonds v to u type like this assume your y is one this is one and v to u types and v and u should not be one if they are greater than or equal to 10 vertical good bonds are there then yes you can make the swap only when the fight ends then only one vertical bond will require one swap hope you guys enjoyed the solution make sure you write your codes in the comment the link to the document to the code codes in c plus plus java python and the prerequisite best prerequisite course of 51 hours and my weekend free dsa plus o plus cp daylight training and my personal guidance everything is in the description of the video make sure you like share and subscribe and if you're interested in one-to-one -one mentoring day life training and regular job referral support from me and our team you can also check the link in the description now, now. guys i have this best free 51 hour course on dsa plus oa plus cp it's linked in the comments below make sure you check it out so you can crack amazon google and many more high paying companies like that also guys my weekend free dsa plus oa plus cp live weekend training group is also in the comments make sure you check it out and if you found value in this video like, share and subscribe. Ram Ram.